just thinking about common chord sequences and why is it that some songs have got the same chords underneath them as other songs? In this virtual singing session from the Diocese of Leeds School Singing Programme, we're going to explore why that is. But first, we're going to have a warm up for our bodies and our voices. We're going to start today's warm up with a full body tense. Now, you might be thinking if you know about singing, but for singing, we need to be relaxed and you'd be absolutely right. And the best way to check that we are relaxed is actually to tense the muscles up first and then relax from there. So you're going to begin by just taking your hands and turning them into, into fists. And then can you tense up your arms all through the muscles into your shoulders? And then can you tense your tummy muscles and then your leg muscles and then your feet so that your toes grip the floor? And now can you tense your neck muscles as well? And lastly, your face so that you look really angry like this. And then we're going to relax in the opposite order. So relax your face, then your neck, then your feet, your legs, your tummy muscles, your shoulders, your arms and your hands. And give them a bit of a shake just to check that they're nice and loosey-goosey. Let's do the same thing again. So hands into fists, tensing the arm muscles, tensing the shoulder muscles, the tummies, the legs, the feet, the neck and then the face. And then relaxing in the opposite order, face, neck, feet, legs, tummies, shoulders, arms, hands, give them a shake. And then this time we're going to do the exercise one more time, but I'm not going to tell you what order things come in, so you've got to remember to do this for yourself. So here we go, tensing in the order. And then when you've done that, relaxing in the opposite order. Whew. Good, have a quick shake. Get the blood flowing around the body. And now we're going to give our face just a little massage. So you're going to start with the cheeks here and round your jaw and then up to your temples like this. Good. And then remember bringing your thumb just underneath your, your jaw here and just uh, massaging the, the root of your tongue. Remember that you want the back of your neck to feel nice and long as you do this, so don't move from there. So just give it a little massage. And now we're going to use our tongue in a similar way. We're going to get the tongue going so that it feels relaxed when we come to sing. And we're going to use it to give the front of our teeth a little scrub like this. Just in case you haven't brushed your teeth enough today. I'm sure you probably have. Let's go in the opposite, opposite way around. And then one more time the first way around. Brilliant. We're going to warm up the breath using this little phrase, boots and cats, boots and cats, boots and cats and boots and cats, boots and cats and boots and cats. So we're going to repeat that over and over again. And as we do it, I want you to gradually make all of the consonants bigger and louder and more powerful, and then gradually get rid of the vowels at the same time. So let's have a go and see what that's like. Boots and cats and 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 cats. So you'll have noticed that that sounds like very amateurish beatboxing, which is what it is. But what I'm interested in is what it does to our tummy muscles. So we're going to repeat that exercise but with the hands on the tummies. And as you get into the kind of beatboxing mode, can you just expel as much air as you can on the p and the k sounds, okay? Boots and cats and 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 boots and cats. All right, so hopefully you can really, really feel the connection between the whole abdominal wall and those powerful consonants, which is really, really useful. Next, speaking of cats, can you just imagine holding a very sweet little kitten in your hands like this and just give it a stroke and make the sound. Even higher. Lovely kitten. And now can you take the kitten and just fling it off a cliff like this. and then let it bounce on a trampoline and catch it again. Phew. 
give it another stroke. That's all right, just reassure it and then throw it off the cliff. It bounces on the trampoline again. And then catch it. Ah, that's good. And now send it on its way. There we go. So we're going to do a little octave scale, just a sound like this. to and I can do the same pattern but quicker to gla like this your turn sound is that it gets the tongue out of the way which is where we want it to be. Fabulous! Last thing before we live our warm-up, can you sing after me? One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight. Then the other way around. Eight seven eight six eight five eight four eight three eight two eight one eight seven eight six eight five eight four eight three eight two eight one. So put that all together and make sure that you're being really consistent with your pitches. So every time you sing one, it's definitely this note and not anything else. And uh, same thing for eight is always that note. Okay, here we go. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight. Coming down. Eight, seven, eight, six, eight, five, eight, four, eight, three, eight, two, eight, one. Now can you do the same thing when you're going to start on two? And we're going to go up the scale like this. Two, three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two, seven, two, eight, two, nine. Okay, so going from two up to nine. Here we go. Two, three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two, seven, two, eight, two, nine. Other way around. Nine, eight, nine, seven, nine, six. just sung is something called a mode. It's the Dorian mode because it's like a scale but a normal minor scale would sound like this. Natural minor and the mode sounds like this. Spot the difference? There's one note different. So it's just that little change of note that makes the whole thing sound a little bit fruitier. Let's do that one more time starting on the two. Two, three, two, four, making sure that that note, seven, is nice and high. Here we go. Two, three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two, seven, two, eight, two, nine. Nine, eight, nine, seven, nine, six, nine, four, nine, five, nine, three, nine, two. Warning. The following singing session contains at least 15 pop songs. Will you spot them all? Make sure you sing along to any that you know. So, why are some chords more common in pop songs than other chords? Let's use Lean On Me as an example. Let's just remind ourselves how that goes. Sometimes in our lives we all have pain, we all have sorrow. got 
three chords in it only, and they are these ones. Chord one, chord four, back to chord one, that's chord five. So those are our three chords for Lean On Me, and they're the most common three chords used in music, and that's because they are kind of natural sounding, they are the three major chords in the major scale, so they all sound really kind of consistent with each other so the mood doesn't change, which is cool. So I can take that little chord sequence for Lean On Me and I could sing a different tune over the top. Uh, join in with me if you know. Swing low, sweet chariot. gospel songs either. I could also sing a bit of Queen over the top of that. So those are also three chord songs which have just got all of those major chords. So what's the next most common? If I'm going to add a fourth chord, what is it going to be? Well, if you remember learning Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, that kind of gives, gives us the answer because we've got It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor four. Then we've got chord six, which is the relative minor chord. And yeah, unlike the other ones, it's obviously not a major chord and it just gives the music a bit more flavour, a bit more spice. So we've now got four chords. One, five, six, four. And probably hearing those chords in that order, you've probably already thought of a song that uses those chords. That's because there are hundreds, literally hundreds, that use those four chords in that order. It makes me think of Let It Be by the Beatles. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. But there are plenty of others. And can you feel the love tonight? those four chords in almost any order as well and they'll sound good. So why not write your own four chord song using first, fifth, sixth and a fourth. Okay things are about to get truly nerdy so I hope you're prepared. We're going to take that chord sequence we just learned and we're just going to adapt it a little bit. We're going to change it so that there's a pattern. And the pattern just goes like this. You start here, you go down four, you go up one. You go down four, you go up one, you go down four. And then you can go up one and then up to here, which brings it back to the start. Uh, so this is a really common chord sequence. We actually sang this in the warm-up when we were singing because you can just sing a really nice scale over the top of it. But there are so many other things that you can do with it. And one of the first people to kind of realise the potential of this chord sequence was a man called Johann Pachelbel. And he wrote this in the late 1600s. See if you recognise it. Some of you listening will already be thinking, I know that song, that is Memories by Maroon 5. And you're totally right, I'm just going to change the key so I can sing it. Here's to the ones that we got, cheers to the wish you were here but you're not, because the drinks bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. Here's to the ones who today, toss to the ones that we lost on the way, because the drinks bring So that 
that's an example of a song that just uses the whole of the Packeldale Canon as its inspiration. And it's even got a little quote of the tune from Packeldale. But there are so many other songs that use basically the same chords. So if you go all the way back to the 1960s, Bob Dylan wrote this brilliant song. Well, it ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. If and you don't know by now. In the 90s, Oasis wrote this. And so Sally can wait. She knows it's too late as we're walking on by. My soul slides away. I don't look back in anger. I heard you say. And then if you go a bit further ahead in history, you get to Green Day. If you like pop punk, you might know this song. sample of the songs that have been written using this same chord sequence. So again, explore. See if you can think of any other songs that fit the music. And while you're doing that, why don't you have a listen to the original Packle Bell Canon. <laughs> wondering what makes it a canon? Why is it called Packlebell's Canon? Well, it's got nothing to do with the type of canon that gets fired on battlefields. Uh, in music, a canon is a tune that can be sung over the top of itself, but at a different time, and it makes its own harmony. So, as an example, let's learn a song called Great Is He. Sing after me. Great is he who's the king of kings. Great is he who's the king of kings. And the Lord of lords, he is wonderful. And the Lord of lords, he is wonderful. Great is he who's the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords, he is wonderful. Great is he who's the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords, he is wonderful. So that is the first part of the tune. The second part starts like this. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Have a go. together. Alleluia, allelu, alleluia. He is wonderful. Alleluia, allelu, alleluia. He is wonderful. Last part. Alleluia, salvation and glory. tune goes. So, great. One, two, three. Great is he who's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He is wonderful. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. He is wonderful. Alleluia.
try layering them up. So here are your options. You can either sing along with me or you can wait until I get to Hallelujah and begin from Great is He or if you're feeling really confident and adventurous you can wait another turn and you can begin Great is He when I get to Hallelujah, salvation and glory. So those are your three options. Here we go. tune that means that they fit together when you sing them all at the same time? Well, an easy way of answering that question is just to say that they all have the same chord sequence. And what that means is that when you've got two songs with the same or a similar chord sequence, very often you can sing them at the same time to make a really cool harmony. So to demonstrate that, we're going to return to a song that we learned a few weeks ago. It's Freedom 90 by George Michael. And there are three little sections of the song that you need to know. Sing after me. to take freedom to kind of pursue more of a bad boy kind of image and I think he's a bit cool for us now. Harry Kyles is getting to be like a real hippie, it's very weird and uh, Kyle Horan, I think he just wants to go back to the 1960s so we're just not really gelling at the moment and they just don't want to sing George Michael with me so uh, anyway I'm gonna do my best. This is Freedom 90 and you can either sing along with me or I'm going to try and add some pop songs, and if you know the extra pop songs, why not sing those? Let's try.
so glad that one Kai election has managed to stay together despite our artistic differences. So, how many songs did you manage to spot during today's session? I've been going for the record. Let's see if you got all of these. So a massive well done if you managed to recognise all of those songs. That's all we've got time for this week. Thank you so much for joining in as always. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a like and we'll be back on Friday with Will for even more fantastic songs. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.